I thought I'd finish this course on solid foundations by talking about raw files. Now, some may think that's a little bit advanced for a foundations course, but I'm thinking, hey, let's give you some value for money and at least make you aware of what a raw file is and what it's good at, and also what you have to do to make it look good. So what you're looking at now are a series of before and after images of raw files. The before images, that's what my camera gave me, and the after images, that's how I process them. So what is a raw file and how do you use them in Photoshop Elements? All right, well, let's come to the Elements interface and we are gonna to come to File, Open in Camera Raw. Come there and let's zoom down. Let's see what we can find. Running Child Raw. I'll make this available for a download so you can take a look at it and click on Open. First thing to notice, this doesn't open within Adobe Elements. It opens up in its own window. And this window, if you look at the top left, is called Camera Raw, in this case, 9.9. .9. Adobe has an engine for processing raw files called Adobe Camera Raw. And what you're looking at is Photoshop Elements version of it. Now I can think of two other places where it appears. One is inside the full-blown Photoshop, and the other one is inside Adobe Lightroom. Now the downside of this within Elements is that this is a much cut down version of the engine. You don't get things like gradations. You don't get the ability to paint in certain areas and make local adjustments. But on the plus side, you do get some access to the Adobe Camera Raw engine, which is a very well respected engine. In fact, I would say it's the industry standard engine for developing raw files. So this is a raw file. At the moment, it's on its side. Let me just turn this around. I'm going to come down to this icon here. Rotate image 90 degrees clockwise, click on that, and now it's upright. And I'm also going to come down to this icon down the bottom, which says cycles between before and after views. Click on that. So now I've got a before and after. Now at the top as well, you can see various different things like the hand tool, the white balance tool. These are the kind of things that we've seen within the main engine and things like red eye or the straighten tool. We've already covered those. I don't see the point in going over them again. What does interest me is what's going on on the right hand panel. It's just a series of sliders. And if you take a look at this, some of these sliders might look familiar by now. Look, we've got exposure, dark and light. We've got contrast, highlight, shadows. This is all stuff that we've covered in other parts of this course, but this is for dealing with raw files. So I suppose the main question is, what is a raw file? How is it different from a JPEG? And what is a raw file good for? These days, most half-decent cameras can take a RAW file. We're starting to see more and more high-end mobile phones also taking RAW files. Now, if you're developing photos, the main difference is when your camera takes a JPEG, it records all the color information, all the tonal information, and then your camera or your phone will try and make that picture look nice for you. It will try and resolve things like dark and light contrasts. It will try and resolve things like color balance. It will try and correct that stuff for you. It will also make your image sharper. And once it has an image that it thinks you're going to like, in order to save space, it gets rid of all the detail that it thinks isn't going to make a difference to you. But the problem with that is sometimes you have to come in and adjust pictures like this picture, for example. Look at it. It's way too dark. The main subject is practically in darkness. And also in the background, you can see I've got some rather blown out highlights on those bits of wood. It's way too contrasty. It's a problem photo. Now with the JPEG, because it's thrown away a lot of the information it thinks I don't need, I'm going to have a real problem trying to bring out the shadows and the highlights. Because not only has it thrown away the detail it thinks I don't need, essentially a JPEG can only operate on 256 different levels of dark to light. It has 256 different levels of dark to light in the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. It has what's known as eight bits of dark to light information. And that is essentially where a RAW file is different. The main thing a RAW file does is give you 12 bits per channel. In some cases, 10 bits, in some cases, 14 bits. And so in very simple terms, instead of having 256 levels of dark to light to play with, you now have 4,096 different levels of dark to light to play with. And what that means is you get a much finer gradation of tone. You've got much more of a chance of rescuing details from the shadows and the highlights areas. All right, let's try that. Let's come to our sliders and let's look at shadows. And we're going to move that slider right the way up. And you can see I'm starting to get some shadow details resolved. What about exposure? Let's lighten up the overall picture. I can do that. And you're starting to see that boy running towards you coming out in full detail. But the problem there is 
we have all these highlight areas here, which are now completely blown out in detail. All right, well, let's go to our highlight slider. Let's drag that to the left to reduce the amount of highlights. And look at that. Do you remember me saying how a JPEG loses the information it thinks you don't need? And also it only has 256 different levels of dark to light to play with? Well, if you took this picture using a JPEG, your camera might have decided, well, look, these details in the highlights I don't really need, so I'm going to lose them. These details in the shadow areas around here don't really need them either, so I'm going to lose them to reduce the file size. A raw file does not do that. It takes every single bit of information that your camera takes and just stores it in a file, a big file. Raw files are much bigger than JPEG files, which means they take up a lot of space on your hard drive. Your computer goes slow when you use them, but the big advantage of them is, is the amount of dark and light detail you can get from a picture. And in this case, the amount of dark and light detail you can rescue from this picture. Try doing what I've just done with a JPEG, you're gonna have a bit of a problem. Okay, let's see what else we can do with this. We have different sliders here. We've used the exposure contrast. We can make it more or less contrasty like this. I might make it slightly less contrasty at the moment just to try and get rid of those dark and light problems because now, okay, I've done highlights, I've done shadows. We have whites and blacks. What about if I just pull down the black slider a little bit more and that just affects just the darkest tones in this picture. What about whites? Can I do something with that? Yes, I can. Com ooh, completely blown out. I've got the option I can further try and rescue some of those highlights from that wood in the background. And maybe I can tweak around the exposure as well. These sliders all affect each other. Look, say if I raise the highlights, that's going to affect the blown out whites in this picture. So this white slider, I might need to move that around. And if I bring this down here to where it was originally, do you remember me in order to compensate for that previously, I move my exposure slider up. They're all interconnected, they all affect each other. So once you move one slider, you may have to go back and move a slider that you've just moved a few minutes ago. Now these first six ones, they all affect the dark and light directly. Clarity is quite a popular one. This one affects the mid-tone contrast. Look, if I move it up, you can see a bit more bite, a little bit more contrast around the mid-tones, which can give a little bit more impact to your photos, but be careful with this one. Clarity can give your photos a little bit of extra snap and a bit more bite, but it is not very flattering on people's faces. The younger the person, the more you can get away with it, but still in this case, it's not doing this little boy's face any favors. So look, I will come here and I will enter zero to get rid of that. Now you have two things here, vibrance and saturation. Well, saturation just takes all your colors and makes them more intense. Oh dear, that's looking a bit too much. So I'm going to double click to reset it to zero. Vibrance, if you have access to it, is a bit kinder. What vibrance does is takes the less saturated colors and increases their intensity, but the more saturated colors it tries to leave alone. So it's a much more gentle way of increasing the vividness of your photographs. And if you do want to bring a bit more color into your photos, I recommend using the vibrance slider over the saturation slider 95 times out of 100. Let's try a vibrance. Maybe a little bit more intense there, but I don't want to overdo it too much. Now I did choose a problem picture for this. When the photo was taken, there was no direct sunlight shining on his face. All I got was the ambient light, the light that bounces off the trees, off the leaves or whatever. So I'm ending up with quite a brown light to this. And so try as I might, I'm not going to be able to get the effect of sunlight gently falling upon his face. So while a raw file is much better than a JPEG for rescuing dark and light, it can't perform miracles. Now I've done dark and light here, but also you've got here. Do you remember these sliders from previous exercises in the expert edit mode? This is your temperature slider. So if your picture is too cold or too warm, you can adjust it using this. Little movements for this, really. Be very gentle and also for the tint as well. Well, in this case, I could try moving it around, maybe trying to get a slightly more natural skin color out of all this reflected light on the kid's face. But in general, I would say that's the other thing that a raw file is good for. Because your red, green, and blue channels each have, say, 4,096 different levels of dark to light to play with, well, your white balance, all you're really doing with that is adjusting the red, green, and blue channels relative to each other. So if you have much more subtle variations in tone in each of those channels, you're also going to be able to get 
much more subtle variations with your color balance.